So let's continue. We talked about uh, how we are going to estimate the surface energy for the low index plane, the low index plane. And then you would find, in many cases, what if the surface is not exactly parallel to a so-called low index plane? Previously, OK, we assume the surface is just 1, 1, 1, 0, 2. But what if this actual surface is not at those low index plane? It is at a angle, arbitrary angle from a low index plane, OK? And uh, for simple geometry, we there's also a way to analyze it, to understand it. Let's kind of let's just draw it uh, for a simple cubic structure. What I'm drawing is a kind of side view for a simple cubic lattice structure. Simple cubic. It's not even FCC. It's simpler than that. Simple cubic. Okay. What's the coordination number for simple cubic? It's just the uh, top, down left right front and back six instead of 12 okay i'm drawing this is my coordinate system x or uh, one zero going towards right y going into the paper or into the screen zero one zero and the z is going upward this is your coordinate system okay and then what I'm drawing is kind of just the one direction projection of the lattice. Each of these crossing points represent a atom. Make sense? So this direction would be our one zero zero. This would be zero zero one. And going into the screen would be zero one zero. Okay. So Assume our exposed surface is actually at an angle, angle of theta, away from the base 001 plane. So this is 001 z direction. 001 plane is just this horizontal plane. Make sense? So it, the actual surface is at an angle, arbitrary angle theta, away from this base from this base 0, 0, 1 plane, OK? And uh, how do we understand, OK, what would be the surface energy per area for such a oblique surface at an angle away from a low index plane? We have a way to estimate. If we say we have unit lens of surface, along this direction unit lens from here to here unit lens make sense let's just say unit lens and going into going along y direction going into it that's our surface okay and uh, if we're going to count still remember how do you estimate surface energy you have to count the number of broken bonds the number of broken bonds along the 001, what is 001? Going upward. The number of broken bonds here, 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 here. Those vertical bonds pointing upward all got uh, broken. Make sense? So the number of broken bonds pointing 001 direction going upward would be cosine theta divided by A times 1 over A. Of course, I'm counting a unit lens here and a unit lens going into the screen. Okay, so cosine theta, if he, from here to here is 1, what's the lens from here to here? 1 times cosine theta from here to here, right? 1 times cosine theta. And what's our so called lattice parameter or lattice constant? That's A. So how many? bonds broken. It will be just uh, cosine theta divided by A, right? That's our first term. And then we are considering unit uh, lens going into the screen, going into the screen, because you are having a side view going into the screen. So 
how many bonds? This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And how many of them in the other direction is 1 over A? These are the total number of bonds pointing which way? Upward that it got broken. Similarly, what about uh, this guy? The bond pointing this way, it also got uh, broken, right? This guy, this guy. So the number of bonds that are pointing along the 1, 0, 0 direction. Remember, this is our 1, 0, 0. Horizontal is our 1, 0, 0. The bonding pointing horizontally, they all got broken, right? How many of them? From here to here, if that's unit length, what's the distance from here to here? Sine, right? Sine. So sine theta times of A, sine theta times of A, tells me how many bonds in this direction broken. Sine theta, I'm using an absolute number, divided by A times 1 over A. So with these two relationships, I can estimate how many bonds pointing upward got broken, how many bonds pointing leftward got broken. So for when I have unit area for this oblique plane, the total energy associated with each broken bond same is half of epsilon. And then the total excess energy, total excess energy per unit area, per unit area, unit length in this way, unit length going into the screen or the paper would be gamma. Energy theta is a function of misorientation angle. Gamma theta would be this guy, cosine term plus the other guy, sine term. Make sense? And A square, we keep it at the denominator. And for each of the bond, it's epsilon over 2. Make sense? That's just OK. Totally, for unit area from here to here, how many bonds got broken? And each of the bond gives me access this much energy per unit area. OK? This is what we have from previous. The excess energy per unit area for a arbitrary plane at an angle of theta away from one of our low index plane. In this case, uh, 0, 0, 1 plane. And if we are going to plot mathematically, let's say you know the lattice constant. It's a constant. And let's say you know the epsilon, the bonding strength is constant. And if we are going to plot E or gamma versus, versus this theta, we are going to have something like this. ESV versus theta, we are going to have something like this. Theta going from 0 degree to 90 degree positive or 90 degree negative. We are going to have something like this. And what it means is the closed pack orientation for like for 001 that's kind of like a lower closer pack the orientation would be lie at the energy minimum we're plotting surface energy excess energy per atom okay it would low lie at the lowest energy point on this curve so called the cusp or trough location. Okay. And if we do some mathematical manipulation, if we look at this relationship, if we go into a so called polar coordinates um, coordinate system, which only consider not x, y, z, but the distance, absolute distance and uh, angle. We are gonna, if we are going to plot this gamma, and it's a function of distance and angle for a, this simple cubic lattice. If we define theta, what does theta mean? 
It's a misorientation angle away from one of your low index plane. In this case, types of one zero zero types of plane for simple cubic. And for simplicity, let's limit theta from zero to ninety degree. Make sense? Let's just let's limit it. And then we are going to rewrite this equation from top to bottom because we are dealing with theta from zero to ninety. The sine theta absolute will become just sine theta, make sense? And then we lump the epsilon and 2a squared together, okay? And then we are going to do some manipulation. I put square root of 2 in the denominator minus, minus, make sense? These two would uh, cancel. And because I put square root of 2 in the denominator, outside I have to put square root of 2. Make sense? Inside I put square root of 2, outside I also have to put square root of 2. And then cosine times this one, sine times this one. Mathematically, from trigonometry, we are going to have the inside, inside this square bracket would just be cosine theta minus pi over 4. It's just uh, what you would uh, learn in trigonometry. Okay, cosine theta, cosine of minus pi over 4 plus sine term, sine of this one. Okay, so that's just uh, our trigonometry equation, which means the gamma, if we're going to rewrite, would be a cosine term times a constant. And the theta means with the angle away from the low index,